In this video, I'm going to talk to you about something known as the facet joints. There are over 100 of the facet joints located within the whole vertebral column. But for this talk, I'm going to mainly discuss the facet joints located within the lumbar spine. I will mention the cervical spine and the thoracic spine, but the focus will be just on here. Another name is the apophyseal joint or zygopophyseal joint, but I think it's easier to know it as the facet. They are highly innervated, so you've got pain receptors. So basically, there's like a dual innervation to them, so, which means there's two nerves, one from the spinal nerve above and one from below, that will innervate on the medial side. And they come from the posterior ramus of each spinal nerve. They have a joint capsule, and naturally we've got synovial fluid within, so they are classified as a synovial joint. If you look here, you can see that, let's say for instance this is L4, so this will be the facet joint. So this will be the superior facet joint here of L4. And if I was to lift this up, then this will be the inferior facet of L4 here. So this one will articulate with the superior facet of L5, just on there. And then this one will articulate with the inferior facet joint of L3, if this vertebra is the L4. In the lumbar spine, the facet joints are more vertically orientated. So I think of, it's not true to say this, but I call them like an active ligament. So the facet joint is more vertically orientated, but it is a specific angle, but I'm not gonna discuss the angles during this lecture. So I'm just briefly going to overview the angle. So if I'm saying it's more vertically orientated, so when you go to rotate, because of the orientation, there's only roughly one to two degrees of segmental rotation within the lumbar spine. So that means there's not much rotation, but obviously movements like flexion and extension, you have a lot of range of motion. Whereas in the cervical spine, they are more horizontally located, just on here, not exactly, which means you have a greater range of rotation within the cervical spine as compared to the lumbar spine. And then in the thoracic spine, they almost like vary between the two. Okay, they're not vertically orientated, they're not horizontal, they are somewhere between the two. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about these because it's not really part of this lecture. If you did not have the facet joints, I would say that the spine, as in the spinal column, would wear down very quickly. So the facet joint allows motion in a certain plane, but they will restrict motion in others. So as I said before, they allow you in the lumbar to flex and extend, but when you say side bend or rotate, especially rotation, there is limited. But also there is something called a coupled motion, which will be in another video. So just to recap, so the facet joints are located, you have a superior and an inferior facet joint. So this will be the superior and then we've got the inferior. And if you have any changes to them, then you can get what we call osteoarthritis, which medically is known as a spondylosis. And then, and that typically happens because the intervertebral disc, which is not located in here, would wear down. And then when the disc dehydrates and the space gets less, the facet joints are more prone to becoming irritated. And over time, it's almost like two thumbnails rubbing together. And as they start to rub, changes will happen and eventually you'll have things like spondylosis. Thank you for watching.